Hey guys, welcome back to the garage. Today we're working on a 2006 Chevy Silverado 1500 5.3 liter engine. Uh, my water pump went out and you know when it rains it pours because my radiator's got a big old crack in it. So three trips to the auto parts store getting the correct things and we're gonna take a look at what we got going on. So from the front of the truck I've already got the radiator shroud removed. I had to pull that off so I could see exactly what kind of radiator I need. The air conditioner is separate from the radiator, but the transmission cooler in this particular model is the same. We've got the transmission lines here and on the bottom there. We've got our line going to our reservoir, top coolant line, and the bottom coolant line. I pulled our radiator out of the box and just confirmed all the connections are the same on here. This one does have a drain plug. The OEM radiator, if you take a look past all this, down there, there's no drain plug. We do use Dexcool. Cool thing about Dexcool is that it leaves a nice orange stain where it's leaking. I've had to decommission my heater core because we had a bad leak back there, and you can see where that all leaked out to. Now these hoses aren't going anywhere, so it's just kind of closed off. I'm going to leave that as it is. Where the radiator pump is, if we look back behind there, we can see all this orange where the back of the, uh, the pump has been leaking onto the engine block. While I was taking a look at that out here, I noticed well, I got a crack in my radiator. That's no good. So, going to have to swap out our radiator and our coolant pump. So let's take a look at the tools that we're going to need to do the job. We've got a little magnetic catch tray for our bolt, flathead screwdriver for our screw clamps, channel locks for our spring clips, 10 millimeter socket, 15 millimeter socket, our big boy breaker bar, and a couple of adapters and extensions. So let's jump right in. We loosen the screws of our intake for removal. I remove the upper reservoir line. Our channel locks make quick work of the spring clamps. And our upper radiator hose. If your hose is stuck, you can gently pry around the end of it with a flathead to break it loose. I remove the bolts for the electric fan shroud. And unplug the electrical connectors for that. We can pull that guy up out of the way. We take our big boy breaker bar and we remove the tension from our tensioner idler pulley so we can pull our engine belt out of the way. It's not a bad idea to take a picture of the belt orientation before you do this for later use. We pull our remaining coolant lines off the water pump. These spring clips can be a bit of a pain to get to with the channel locks. You might have to try a few different angles to get them off. Here I'm loosening some of the bolts for the water pump. I remove my idler tension pulley and the thermostat housing. These are going to go on the replacement water pump, so I clean them off with a scour pad. So we got the electric cooling fan taken out, got all the hoses taken off, made quite the mess. Uh, I do have a catch pan down there so it's not all pouring out all over the driveway. The water pump should come out now. Oh, I missed the bolt. Yeah, another bolt there. So it looks like uh, three bolts on either side holding the water pump to the engine block. Yeah, there's one right there too. So thermostat, this guy is gonna sit in here like so. Uh, with this thermostat, there is a little tab here. Boop, boop, boop. That's gonna go right here. So we gotta make sure that those line up. All right, so that is nice firmly in there. And we can see our thermostat housing gasket is going to just go over it, and that uh, rubber will kind of go on there. So I'm going to apply a little bit of schmoo on both sides of this, and then uh, bolt this guy back up. Ooh, it's blue. Now I'm loosening up the transmission cooler lines. I dropped the replacement radiator in place so I can transfer the lines without losing too much transmission fluid. I unbolt and pull the old radiator out, 
It was here I realized I got the wrong size radiator from the auto parts store. You can see this one's a little bit smaller than what's already in the truck. I got a 4.8 instead of the 5.3 size. And now you can see the correct size radiator in place. I've already connected the transmission cooler lines. I finished removing the bolts from the bad radiator pump and pulled that out of the way. Taking a scour pad, I cleaned the contact spots where the old gaskets were to prep for the new pump. I put a bit of water pump gasket sealer on the engine block where the pump mates up. Off camera, I applied gasket sealer to the pump and put the new gaskets in place. I put some bolts through the pump to help hold the new gaskets in place before hand tightening it to the engine. I put in the rest of the bolts, hand tighten, and then ratchet them down in a crisscross pattern to apply even pressure tightening down the pump. Now I'm getting the belt in place. We use our big boy breaker bar to remove the tension from the idler pulley so we can get the belt back on. If the hoses don't look bad, you might decide you're going to save a little bit of money and reuse the same clamps and hoses. That's fine. If you're starting to see bulges in some of the hoses, like my bottom radiator hose had, you're going to want to replace that. You can also swap out your spring clamps for some screw clamps. That's gonna make putting everything back together a breeze, and if you ever have to get in here later, it's gonna be a lot easier than having to deal with those spring clips. I put the low radiator hose on first, using my channel locks to pre-tension the clamps. I reattach the remaining coolant lines to the water pump. I put the electric cooling fans back in place, bolt those down, reconnect the connectors. Now I get the upper radiator hose in place. We put our intake tube in place, secure the hoses, and put our reservoir return line back on. With everything back together, now we can put our coolant in our reservoir. You can get a pre-mixed 50-50 uh, coolant blend straight from the auto parts store, or you can get a condensed version and dilute it half and half with distilled water. It's really up to you which route you choose. Uh, I think it saves me a few dollars mixing it myself but uh, I haven't done the math recently. With that out of the way, we'll start the truck and we'll take a look in our engine bay. Check around all of your hoses and around the pump, make sure you don't have any new coolant coming out. Check your transmission fluid while you're at it. You probably left some behind in the old radiator, so you're gonna have to top that off too. Shut the truck back off and check your coolant reservoir after the coolant has a moment to settle. You might have to top that off again too. And that's it guys, congratulations. You just changed out your water pump and your radiator. I hope this video is easy enough to follow. Uh, like, subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take a look here at the old pump, and we can see exactly where it failed. This cap on the main housing, you can see the seal actually blew out from it. With a radiator, very, very small crack. Not that big of a deal, but if I pressed on it, I could see the build up there kind of flexing. So I went ahead and replaced that too because it'd be a shame to do the water pump and all that and then just have something else fail.